Welcome to this episode of Chatting with Stacks. I'm your host, Bill Stacks, and today I got Albert Sugar Bear Barberi, also known as number eight in your scorecard, number one in your heart. I said, Did they ever, are they going to approach you or have they approached you? And he went, They won't approach me. And that's that right there, I knew that my father was well respected. And by that time, you know, he was much older regime, and the regime he came from, he wasn't going to get approached the first street tax and everything. And I think at that time, it was like 1984, five, six, where my father was ready to retire. Yeah. But yeah, so that's that's a racketeer. My father was one. It was, just, you know, growing up in South Philly, it was, it was, it was good to be his son. And like that, I never got, I never got in any trouble. But my dad was well liked and respected. And that's, that's it. He always had a lot of money on him too. But my dad, no, you know what? No, my dad wasn't a gambler. You know, obviously he made money off gamblers, right? You know, uh, he, he, well, he wasn't a flashy guy. He wasn't a flashy. He always had a nice car. Uh, always had Cadillacs and, you know, had a nice, beautiful, uh, shore home, summer home. It was a summer, but he had a nice home in Margate, New Jersey before anybody had one. <laughs> He bought it in 1967 before Margate. So there might have been a few other people that uh, started to buy a home in Margate, New Jersey, which wind up being uh, a nice uh, summer home for people in South Jersey and South Philly and Philadelphia to spend their summers. Because by, by 1978, the casino burst. But no, yeah. my, my father just... Uh, no, so to answer your question, no, he never, he never, he was not a flash guy. He didn't flash. He wasn't that. My father was low key and just tried to help many people in the neighborhood. Uh, he was a committee man. He had a lot of political pull, my father. Uh, you take 30 pinches and don't get found guilty. That tells you something. My yeah. father was, yeah, uh, I should have brought it, I should have brought it with me. It's actually, I actually got in my briefcase in the trunk of my car. But the, we can get into that, how he got to that. But uh, my father uh, was very instrumental at, at election time because he was a committee man in, our, in my ward, the ward my father came from. It was called the 48th Ward. And, you know, he had arms reach to city jobs, state jobs, anything to do with the city, license inspection. So for a vote, my father, if, if you were in the neighborhood or anybody needed a favor, traffic court, my father had a stranglehold of traffic court. My God! <laughs> so someone got a parking ticket or a red light. Yeah, they you come. To him. You you call. Yes, Joey Molino came to my house in about three. It's funny to suspend the license of, of two times that I know of. Come now, I know the one time knock on the door. Joey, Joey's got to be. This is in the eighties. So if I got four years on Joey, uh, let me see. If I'm twenty four, five. Joey's like twenty. Knock on the door. Go, Joey, I remember one time I answered. What's up, Joey? Sure, your father home. Yeah. Come, my father come in the kitchen. Don't tell me again, Joey. Yeah, please. So, yeah, my father had big pull in traffic court, and uh, but in return, you had to vote his way come election time, because my father, in return for those favors, you know, wasn't getting found guilty on all his pinches, but he would help certain councilmen, judges get reelected by the people who would get favors from my father with jobs and 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 getting help getting the tickets squashed and all that stuff. You have problems with your property, license inspection. Psst. It was insane. It was insane. And uh, come election time, you would have to vote the way my father would tell you. I, I, be, I worked the polls. I remember being, I watched my father go in the election, in the booth with an older woman or whatever. And he'd tell you, most of the time it was either a old Republican or Democrat, whoever's running, councilman, mayor, whatever. And he'd, he'd tell you who to... It's funny. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it wasn't a corrupt thing. It was just like, listen, if you're in the neighborhood and my father got you a second job because you're a newlywed, just got married, but your wife wants to work and my father got you a state job, maybe on the toll booth. Trust me, you ain't worrying about, you know, what lever you're going to pull come election time. My father, you come to the poll and my father tell you, this is who you're going to vote. You're going to do it. Yeah. You're going to do it because you're worried about your life. We you can't, you can't care who's in, in office. You know, but uh, that's how it went. And my father w was so strong in that regard. It was nuts. 
I never paid for a ticket. I didn't get many, but I, I never had to pay for a ticket. I heard Philly Crazy. is is terrible for parking and fill and uh you know uh, you know when it's and towed and all that. Well, now it is. Now it is these days. When I look back, and and look at the cars we drove, how long they were, how the Rados, Cadillacs, how they're like boats, and yeah. How do we fit all these cars in the in, you know parallel parking nowadays? There's there's angle parking started maybe like 30 years ago. Angle they park on an angle now. As you go down the street, you see cars on an angle, and it makes sense. You get more cars to park because they're not parallel. Yeah. You know, on a street that's a block long, maybe you know, uh, 300 yards long, a block maybe, maybe you get I don't know 25 cars. Now, if you put them parallel. <laughs> Maybe get double that, you know. Yeah, but, but it was yeah. It was, it's it's the parking in South Philly is insane, man. And the uh, and the uh, public, the parking authority just abuses their just just abuses people with parking, man. Giving tickets out, it's sad. Holding sad. their car hostage and putting boots on yeah. and all. This yeah, stuff. well, people put you know. Can you imagine driving around for twenty five minutes, thirty minutes? To find a parking spot, and if you come home eleven thirty at night, it's just, it's just everybody's family's got three, four cars in a family. You know that wasn't the case in the seventies, eighty when I grew up. Yeah, everyone. I got lucky in, in my in my neighborhood, in my where I lived with my mother, across the street on Broad and Wolf. I grew up in Broad and Wolf. Was a funeral parlor, and my father was it was so close with the family, the Leonetti family. You know, Joe Leonetti, the owner of the funeral parlor, gave gave me permission to. My father, I told him my, who my father was, and and my father talked to him. He said, sure, I park, I park in the parking lot, in the few, in the few Apollo parking lot. <laughs> was, no he re was he related to? Uh, no, that had no relation. No, no that Leonetti. There's a lot of Leonettis in South Philly. Yeah. I went to high school with a Joe Leonetti. He was not related. He's an oral yeah. surgeon these days. He's a good When kid. is the first time that you came across Salvi Testo? What was your first dealings with him? Well, I, I, yeah. Well, Salvi Testa. You know, Salvi Testa, I say this all the time. It's when I told my Salvi Testa story about the poker game, and I'll, I'll share a little bit of it. You know, these guys that we know to be mob guys, gangsters, connected, whatever, you know, they're human beings just like we are, right? Yeah. When, they're not in the, when they're not in the moment, whatever life they're in, the world they're in, they're, not, they're human beings. They're nice guys, right? Um, so Salvi went to the same high school I went to, Bishop Newman. He's two years older than me. I knew his friends, okay? Uh, Salvi's father and my father knew each other, respected each other. My father's a little older than Salvi's father. My father would be coming up on 100 and 104 years old if he was alive, my father, come up in April. But um, Salvi played you know, Salvi played sports in the neighborhood. He'd come to the gym. Gary we call it Govern Recreation Gym at 16th and Jackson. Saturday morning, played basketball. He played in rough touch leagues, 1978, 79. So Salvi, to me, Salvi was just a, a nice cool dude. You knew his father was Phil Tested, you know. Um, but my first actual, you know, <laughs> my first run, and I tell a story about it at a poker game. And a hangout, South Philly, at Catherine and Hutchison Street. I'm in a five-card stud game. Salvi's to my left. And to save this, you want me to tell the story? I mean, it's I can yeah. tell you. I can tell you. I can. So, yeah, you can tell me. Okay, so it's 1982. Okay, uh, unbeknownst to me, you know, it's like I say, uh, Salvi. This is two years prior to Savi getting killed. Savi got killed in 1984, September of 84. This is after Bruno gets killed, right? Yes. Yeah, Bruno gets killed March of 80. This is in 82. I know it's 1982 because the apartment I lived around the corner from this hangout, I just moved into this apartment in 82, in the summer of 82. Uh, and um, there's a hangout, and we're going to play, and there's a grocery store. And in the back room, like every hangout where gin rummies played and poker, and we're going to play five-card stud game. And 
and I want you, I want your, I want your listeners to know I'm no Gianni Russo. I'm no Gianni Russo. I, I don't sprinkle bullshit to make the story fabricate more. I don't, I don't lie. There, this story. There's the two guy, two of the guys that were in the game are still living today. Ralphie Head, a bruisey, he's still living. I know he remembers this. Um, Russell Conti, who owned the store. His brother, Anthony Conti, they called him Anthony Wiener. He was there. Um, and before Chicky just passed away a year ago, when I told this story in 2019, I asked Chicky if he don't mind me telling the story because Chicky was involved in the story. And he said, Sugar, go ahead. Feel free to tell the story. I remember it like it was yesterday. And he just got out of jail five years prior, you know, because I tell the story in 2019. I think Chicky got out of jail in 2015. Yeah. So I just wanted to make sure I wasn't stepping on anybody's toes because, you know, it had nothing to do with 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 the mob related or mafia. It was all about guys that hang out. But anyway, it's 1982, so I'm in this poker game, five-card stud. That's what we played back then. It was seven-card stud, five-card stud growing up in the 80s, all right? And I got Salvi Tested to my left. I got Ralphie Head to my right. I got Anthony... Russell or uh, Anthony Conti, we call him Anthony Wiener. I got Gary Animal, one of Gary, one of Salvi's closest friends, Gary Animal. I can now, I, I made a mistake in my recent story. I said Mikey. Mikey's his brother. I misspoke. It's Gary, another kid, Mikey Mannion. And I'm in a hand with Salvi, and we're at the end, raise, re raise. I raise him back, right? I make a straight, ace, two, three, four, five. So if you know anything about poker, that's a big hand, five card stud, right? And all of a sudden, guys at the table start to make a comment, joke. Ralphie Head makes a comment. Sometimes you get the bear, but sometimes the bear would get you. And I'm laughing. I repeat it. I'm pulling the money. I got the money in my hand, and I feel it snatched out of my hand. And Salvi snatched the money out of my hand. $900 I have. And I'm shocked, right? And, I, you know, it's Salvi, right? I, I, what am I going to say? What the fuck you doing, Salvi? I ain't going to say that. I, I just ain't going to do it. But I'm waiting for him to break to see, is he serious? And it isn't. He's not. He's, he is serious. And all of a sudden, he starts, what's so funny, sugar? Because now I got, I'm like, shy. I'm like, I'm lit. You can hear a pin. Drop in the room. What's so funny, sugar? This ain't no funny no more, huh? What happened? What happened? To sometimes you get the bear and the bear gets you. Oh, my God. I'm like, Jesus, what the hell? I got myself in there. I don't know what to say. I don't even know what's proper to say. Yo, Sal, give me my money back. Or what are you going to do? Get I mean, God knows. Are you going to ante up, sugar? You got to ante up. We're going to play. Deal the cards. Let's go. Sugar, ante? And I'm like, I don't have my money. He's got it. So I'm like Ray Liotta in the movie, like in Goodfellas, but number looks to Salvi. It's 1982. He's pulling this off, right? And yeah. I'm like, I, I, I got to get up. I can't play. I ain't got no money. I got to walk. I got to walk out of the hangout. Do the walk of shame. Walk out. My apartment's around the corner. Felt like half an hour to get there. I'm dazed, confused. I'm, I'm in shock. Um, next day, I get a phone call by a friend of mine, Gigi. His name's uh, Salvatore Storione. I'm friendly with him. At the time, he was dating Chicky Changalini's daughter, Marie. Now, don't get confused about the Maria, Marilina, and Salvi Association. Chicky had two stepdaughters that he raised because he had three biological sons. And the Gigi was dating Maria, Chicky's other daughter. And he calls me up. Shug, what's going on? Ah, nothing, Gig. What's going on? I said, listen, Gigi says, I just got off the phone with Chicky. I talked to Chicky. He said he wants to talk to you. Why? Well, I said, come on, are you serious? Why would Chicky? Now, this is a year before Chicky goes away. This is 1982. I, Chicky had to go away in 1983. My memory is pretty good. So, yeah. so um, I said, Gig, come on. Does this have anything to do with the poker game last night? And Giggy goes, yeah, it does, show. I'm like, come on. I'm saying to myself, really? I said, all right, I'll be over. So Chicky lived, Chicky uh, Chang lived a couple doors away from the hangout where the poker game was, the hangout. 
the grocery store there. Just, I'm talking steps away. Yeah. I go, I don't know what I'm going, I don't know what he's going to tell me, what he's going to tell me, say to me. I get in there, he shits me down. Sugar, what happened last night? The poker game was Salvi's upset.